Welcome to the latest episode of Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Um, I am your host, David Beauchamp, and I am joined by the brilliant Clayton Wick, who I can't thank enough for this week's episode, because this was his brilliant idea, and I couldn't be happier about it. I'm very excited. So, I'm so sorry. Oh, don't be. Don't be. It was, it was absolutely incredible. It was magic. And over here we have Angela Pritchett. Yes, whose skirt I now own um, from a movie she was in, which is awesome. You'll see me wearing it in a future episode of Galaxy Pirate Radio, just for shits and giggles. And the brilliance that Clinton brought to us this week, um, it's a small divergence from what we normally would talk about, but I think it fits in perfectly with what we talk about, what we talk about here. It has Colin Baker in it, and it sucks. It's close <laughs> to what we usually talk yeah. about. Um, but Clayton brought to, to my attention this film called The Air Zone Solution that stars five doctors, um, one companion, and two vil villains from Doctor Who. Four doctors. It wasn't Alan uh, one of them from Children or er, in uh, Curse of the Fatal Death? Was he? I think so. Yeah. He just wasn't a doctor yet. But or the Arizona Solution had um, John Pertwee, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, who is Clayton's favorite, Sylvester McCoy, we have Perry, we have the voice of the dialects and some of the Cybermen, Davros, and then one of the doctors from the uh, Curse of the Fatal Death. So let's jump right in there. Um, and we're going to do this a little reverse. Normally I ask, what do you like about this episode or uh, what we watch? But we're going to start oppositely. What didn't you like about this episode, this, uh, the Arizona Solution? Sylvester McCoy's wardrobe really hurt. Hurt me here. The entire plot to this movie is based around the idea that because you are a character in a movie who is played by a guy who once played the doctor, you have a psychic link with everyone <laughs> else who is a character in this movie who is played by someone who was once the Doctor. And you didn't like that? Also, <laughs> also, I'm okay with movies that want to have a big political message. I'm cool with that think that it's very important that art is capable of speaking to people on that level. The problem is with the exact message communicated. That, y that England wants everyone to be frog people. Well, more than that. <laughs> the opening monologue tells you <coughs> private industry has been put in a position of attempting to solve the problem of, of pollution and that this is bad. Therefore, we need the gov- and also, technology won't help us. The government needs to step in and fix it. Then the rest of the movie demonstrates the government is either criminal, or incompetent, or just plain doesn't want to do anything. So, private industry can't help, government can't help, technology can't help, the only recourse left, according to the plot of this movie, its stated message is, <laughs> fuck it, let's just burn civilization to the ground and live in the ashes. And the only people that can save us are the guys that played the doctor. Yeah. With the dramatic gun scene at the end. <laughs> you, you know whose fault it is that we had this? Because this was actually filmed around the 30th anniversary um, by a very interesting company. I was actually reading a little bit about BBV. Um, basically, they did a lot of stuff with former actors from Doctor Who and stuff, and they actually bought the rights to use Liz Allen, who was a um, companion of the third Doctor. Um, so they did a lot of stuff with those characters. But 
the person who's who we thank for this because this was sort of this sort of came about because we didn't get the 30th anniversary that they wanted to do with the doctor with the BBC um, because of the Doctor Who TV movie. So if we didn't have the Doctor Who, Doctor Who TV movie, we probably would not have had the Arizona solution, and we would have had a proper uh, 30th anniversary Doctor Who special, which was actually uh, it was it was plotted out really really. I, I like the idea behind it. Which basically the, the plot behind the, what was going to be the 30th anniversary was Tom Baker, the, the fourth actor never died. Um, so it throws everything else out of whack. And they basically have to get everything back on track. And it was going to involve all the doctors that were still alive at the time. Hmm. Yeah, that would have been better than this. Yeah, but at that time the BBC didn't want to spend a lot of money on Doctor Who. Yeah, but they were hoping that they were going to get the financing from Spielberg. Because that's who was interested in, and that was yeah, part of Yeah, because America behind. makes everything better. Well, no, I mean, Spielberg, it was Spielberg's company that was behind the Doctor Who TV movie. I mean, basically, it was just his production company. You just say Spielberg, and I think about lead, you know, refrigerators. Yeah. No, this was 15 years before. I know, but they still could have made <laughs> something similar. Yeah, but um, doctor crawling my refrigerator. But that's basically what what stopped it from happening. And the BBC was hoping to get money from Spielberg and and that production company to do a a bigger budget anniversary thing, which didn't happen. But honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Urza solution. I think it is perfect in every sense of the imagination. I had so much fun with this. I mean. I can't even put it into words. I just, this was amazing. It was worth every penny I spent on this thing. And I can't wait to go through all the special features to really just to experience this in, in, its, in its entirety. Chirp, 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 chirp. Well, it looks like Clayton's gonna kill me. I just, I know, I really, I really dug it. It felt so much like a classic Doctor Who episode. I mean, Especially with the filming technique. Um, you mean filming it on video? Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it really did. I mean, I could have seen this being if one of the Doctor's stories. Um, of course, Nicholas Briggs was the one who wrote this. Who would later go on to be the voice of the dialects and some of the Cybermen. Exterminate. And mm -hmm. honestly, no, no. The the doctor does things. He go. He's a dynamic character. He is introduced to a situation. The situation changes simply through his presence. Yeah. He then goes and out. And the situation got awesome boring because there were four of them, change. and they screwed up their timelines. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the story of a bunch of guys who stand around doing nothing. Until, ev until well, eventually the plot just kind of resolves itself. Look at Pertwee's role. He's just the guy he's who keeps... Sinister. He's just got to walk around in an awesome hat the whole movie. Yeah, he just, <laughs> walks up, he just walks up behind Baker and McCoy a couple times in the movie, says about two sentences worth of encouraging or vague words, and then just walks off into the sunset... With his awesome hat. And not once does anyone call him on this. Well, they don't even get his name. <laughs> did you did you know where he, where he walked off into the sunset to the toilets? That was the sign above where he was walking to, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Tells you a lot about the ending of this film and this whole movie. I loved it. I mean, no, I mean honestly, this easily could be a Peter Davison episode where something happens to him and he psychically psychically calls out to his companions to do something. It, totally, I I could have seen this. It would have been brilliant. And honestly, you rework this script, give it a bigger budget, and I think it'd be a phenomenal movie, feature film. Now I understand why Americans aren't allowed to write Doctor Who episodes. So instead of watching this, you just need to go... Where is it? That's not it. Where is it, baby? What? It, what? So you want... Here we go. People, don't go by that. Go by this and just watch this over and over. Because <laughs> this came out this past week, too. It's just... Well, I'm not telling people to buy buy this, um, but I absolutely... Okay, is there anything you guys liked about this? Two things. What, it ended? Number one, it was 20 minutes shorter than I thought it was. 
And number two, I'm a really big fan of the game Six Degrees of B. Arthur, and this game really simplifies things for most of the doctors. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter if you're going with Colin Baker, or Sylvester McCoy, or Peter Davison, or John Pertwee, they're all in here. So, you can get any one of those four doctors, and from there, go to Alan Cumming, because they were all in the Arizona Solution with him. Then from there, you go to Spice World, which Alan Cumming was in, with Hugh Love Laurie. that movie. Hugh Laurie was also in Stuart Little with Estelle Getty, who of course was in The Golden Girls with B. Arthur. Four degrees! It used to take like six to do that. <laughs> and if you think about it, it just also then connects all the other doctors, except for Hartnell, off of Peter Davison. No. Hartnell, you can get with only one additional degree because of the three doctors. Ah, oh, that's right, because he was in that. Yeah. And then you get, um, through Davison, who get uh, Tenet. Yeah. And then... Actually, with Tenet, you, you get, um... Watch this. You get, um, Matt Smith, right. and you get Eccleson. Right. The only one you don't get is, uh... Is, uh, what's his name? Um, TV movie guy. Uh -huh, I'm trying to blank. McGann. Yeah, but McGann is easy. Because McGann was in the Doctor Who TV movie yeah. with Eric Roberts. Yes. Who was in The Expendables with Sylvester Stallone. Ah, yes! Who was in Stop Where My Mom Will Shoot with yeah. Estelle Getty, who was in The Golden Girls with B. Arthur. Yes. Nice. See? It's simple. Now, all of the doctors are really just like four or five degrees removed, and it's all thanks to this movie. Okay, so, what's the second thing you liked about this? Oh, that was the second thing. Well, oh, the first thing, yeah, it was 20 minutes shorter than you thought. Yeah. So, was there anything you liked about it? There has to be something redeemable. Just for the sheer... They wanted... The, the people in England want to turn people into frog people. That was kind of interesting. I, they probably like it better that way. It's yeah, I'm, I'm glad there. it wasn't something like they were just trying to get them used to the pollution. They were trying to transform into like amphibian frog people to run around the earth, where there's where we're killing it. See, I was I was expecting maybe like some sort of Cybermen type thing, with the way they had those things coming out of her, out of her throat at that one point. I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be like yeah. robotics. If you want to see Sylvester McCoy in a Hawaiian shirt, you need to watch this movie. Or if you want to see. Harry and Baker. Have a make out scene. <laughs> that was awesome. She was kissing his his furry chest. It was great. No, I she was kissing his that. happy trail. <laughs> I didn't need to see that. It was This this movie kind of the worst. Oh, so many so many degrees of Though you you know what you know what movie we, we really need to do next? Because it involves one of us. I am terrified to hear what the next words out of your mouth might be. This is be. not, it's not Doctor Who, so no. No, no I, I think we should. No. I think it ties in. No. Yeah. It does not tie oh, in. Oh, yeah. That's a very totally different podcast whatsoever. No, no, no. I, I think we should totally do this sometime. Let me get it out of the box here, which I need you to sign everything. It would help if you'd watch it. I know. Well, pork chop. Chops. Chops. Because yes. it's the second film. Pork yeah. Chop is the first one, which will be available at Best Buy and Walmart December 6th. Yes. Our lovely co-host server here was in this, and then I also helped funded part of this um, movie um, for its release. So I think, really think that we should review this at some point and see if we can't make it into a drinking game for me and Clayton, because I think that'd be a lot of fun. No, it's not Doctor Who. We're sticking to Doctor Who type stuff. We should have made this into a drinking game. We oh, have. this would have been brilliant because I just I just cooked up a new batch of some of my uh, flavored vodkas. So I was thinking, you know, something like every time someone does or says something that's stupid but only happens so that it can <laughs> give the pretense of advancing the non-existent plot, you just you just drink until your fucking heart stops. <laughs> Well, we can also drink every time we see a doctor on, on, on screen. Or actually, more than more than one doctor on screen at the same time. My way will get you drunker this. faster. I don't know. I think, they, I think they both... We should play your way. You play your way, I play it my way. And we still get drunker faster. 
this is how interesting this movie was. Because notice, we're not talking about it anymore. We're just talking about them getting drunk. Yeah. It, it was... I really liked it. I Again, give it two thumbs up. The Complete Six series came out last Tuesday. You should probably go check it out. Okay, in the Arizona Solutions defense, <laughs> I would rather watch it than The Two Doctors. <laughs> oh, wow. I cannot believe you just said that. Couldn't we kind of call this The Four Doctors? <laughs> you, you could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, there's a picture of Troughton in it. I didn't see it. So you can get away with saying that it's the five doctors. Yeah, but did you actually see the because, Troughton photo? Because it's, it's got an equal claim to, it's got as much claim to the title as the five doctors yeah. does. Yeah, but did you see the fish, uh, fish, fish, yeah, picture? Yeah, yeah, the file folder. You see like only the top yeah. half of his I head, but his it's in there. Uh, uh, oh, was it, the, was it the, that one they the, opened, the, one she it, opened the air zone? No, yeah. it's the one, isn't it the one that he opened though, and it showed him the... the yeah, the, the black and white photo. Yeah, yeah that was, that was Troughton? Yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. Was it, it from his... just from up here up? It was like, and it was like his nose up. was pressed up yeah. against him. Was yeah. that from his regeneration scene? I don't know. Because it kind it kind of looked. I mean, if that's it, it there kind was of a looked... bad haircut in it, so I could tell who it was pretty quick. I gotta I, I gotta see if I can figure out where that photo came from. But um, do we have anything else we want to say about this brilliant film? Did you just use that word with this film? Oh yeah, brilliant! Absolutely brilliant. Okay, I want. Every... It's up there with the dialect porn. Every one of you watching this, all seven of you, I want you to watch this so that you can suffer as much as we did. I want to get Jason to see this. Oh, oh, we need to get some, like, alcohol in him. Like, oh. have some whiskey or some no, vodka no. ready for Jason. We watched it sober the first time. <laughs> he also It'll be so much more it. fun to see Jason watching this drunk. Come on, he can even bring hot pink Jesus. Maybe more fun for you, but I think I'll get enjoyment out of watching the prolonged suffering <laughs> of another human being who has been I exposed to the You did this solution. to me. You got to watch this with me. Well, yeah. I, I loved it. And anytime you, you find any, any other drums like this, you let me know, because I'll get a copy of it so we can watch it. We need to find that music video that they did right after Doctor Who was cancelled when they were trying to get the BBC to bring it back. Really? Yeah. I gotta find I this. I say we just watch a bunch of the John Barrowman and music videos of him singing songs because those are great. No. Come on. No. I don't know. Fireflies no. was pretty good. Yes. No. Fireflies was awesome where I kissed a girl and I liked it. Him doing that in heels is amazing. No. So go to YouTube no. and type it in. No, that one's a letdown because he doesn't even know the words. Well, it was still awesome. Or him singing all the single ladies. That one was He does good. look really good in heels. I'll he give him that. He looks amazing in heels. Dude, dude. <laughs> we... When we're done with Torchwood, we should review the producers. Yes! I, I've never seen it. I really want <laughs> to oh see it. Oh my gosh, it. we should! You, you have it. not seen the producers. This oh, is as no. good an excuse it's as amazing. any to watch it. Because I know he plays, what, Barrowman is a Nazi. Yes, yeah. he's a Nazi, and he has blonde hair in it. I oh, know, I've oh. seen the pictures. Yeah, he's like, he's kind of like the star of the Springtime yeah, for he's, Hitler he's, number. Yeah, Springtime nice. for Hitler. Okay, do we have anything else we want to say about the Arizona Solution? Other than I loved it, you guys hated it, and I will be re I'll be reviewing some of the special features for you guys later on. Not so much, but go onto Facebook and type in Galfrey Pirate Radio and join our Facebook page. If you enjoyed this, I loved it. Then I'm beginning to wonder if, whenever it is we get around to reviewing the Dalek porn, the two of us are going to be watching it for entirely different <laughs> reasons. Well, see, I want to get Allegra. She's seen it already with me. Um, I really want to get like one or two other people to see this thing because. It's apps. I actually have one of the collector's editions of this thing. Um, the BBC was not happy about it at all. Um, and even after they name changed it, the BBC still went after these people. But I, I have one of the limited edition number uh, double sided uh, versions of the uh, of of the dialect porn. There's a collector's edition. Yeah, the collector's edition are the original copies that were made before the BBC went after them. Um, and I have one of the originals.
And with that, this brings us to the end of this episode of Galfrey Pirate Radio. Um, until next time, we are signing off. <laughs>